Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I've been sorting out my romance scammer folder and I found this video. I'd made it but I hadn't finished it so here it is. Denise would like to introduce you to Ted Martin. Day 1, 1st of February. Hello he said, thanks for your friendship. Hi said Denise, nice to meet you. Good to have you here he said, how is your health and happiness? Goodness said Denise. I'm an emotional wreck and my anthropomorphism is playing up something awful. How is your health and happiness? I'm doing good, thanks, he said. I'm a commanding general in the US Army Force, currently stationed here in Syria. I'm from Colorado Springs. I know where you're from. I live in Guildford, she said. It's in the south of England. England, he said. Beautiful place to be. I'm divorced with two sons. They is currently in college. Are you married with kids or any pets? Are you there? I'm a widow, said Denise. I have two children and four grandchildren. Wow! What a lovely family you have, and I'm happy for you. Have you been to England? she asked. No, I haven't, he said, but hopefully I'll be there some day. When you said it was a beautiful place, I thought you meant you'd been here. Without me being there, he replied, I know it's a beautiful place to be. I will be retiring in the next three months when I will be in the States. Exciting times ahead. I can't wait to retire. I've been in the military for the past 35 years. That's a long time, said Denise. Will you do something else or just enjoy your retirement? I will, he said. But first and foremost, I will come my head down after a long time off work. You know what I mean? Is that an American expression? asked Denise. I don't know it. Hello, well, he said. Just for me, may I know what you retired from? Oh, said Denise, it isn't an American expression. If it's your own, tell me what it means, please. Come my head down, that is. I was an accountant. I ran my own business with my late husband. That is good, he said. Are you going to tell me what come my head down means? Asked Denise again. That simply means I have to let go of all the experience I've seen during the war. He replied, oh, OK, yes, you probably will need time to readjust, she said. Now you get it, he said. I really enjoy talking with you. And honestly, I would like to have you as my friend. What do you think, Denise? It's always nice to make new friends, said Denise. Have you travelled a lot with the military? Yeah, well, I don't usually come to Facebook due to my work and rebels who try to hack into our system here. You've got to admire the scammer's ability to continue a conversation. Oh, said Denise, maybe we can talk after you're back in the US then. Do you have Google Chat, he asked. I use Google Chat to communicate with my colleagues who are in other bases here in Syria and Afghanistan. Yes, I do, she said. And so, of course, they moved to Google Chat stroke Hangouts. Over on Google Hangouts. Denise asked, tell me about Colorado Springs. Does it really have springs or is it just a name? Hello, well, said our man. Oh, said Denise, why is that funny? Our man resorted to Google, but missed out the opening quotation marks. It was known as Thomas Springs, he said, in what is now known as Monument Valley Park. If you go looking for that spring, you won't be able to find it. The park is still there. But Thomas Spring was destroyed in the flood of 1935. Oh, that's sad, said Denise. Yes, it is. To which Denise replied, you should have either added the first quotation mark, so I know you copied the answer, or removed the second, in the hope that I wouldn't know. Yes, I did, he said. Now tell me by yourself, like the mature man that you are, she said. The truth is, that I wasn't born there, was stationed there. Oh, said Denise, you said that's where you live. Where were you born? As I've said many times before, our man had several copy and paste paragraphs that he needed to copy and paste. And this gave him the perfect opportunity to copy and paste. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I am originally from Jacksonville Beach, Florida, but I reside in Colorado Springs with my family before my divorce case. Due to my divorce case, I give my house to my wife, so I'm thinking of getting a new house when I come over to the state. 
When you go back to Colorado Springs, or go somewhere else, asked Denise. I'm thinking of something else, he replied, and got straight back to the copying and pasting. I want to tell you something. I was thinking of deactivating my Facebook account when I came across your profile on Facebook. So when you don't see me on Facebook, just know that I have deactivated my Facebook account. I need to concentrate on my job. My job takes a lot of my time. I have many men under my command. I hope you understand. I'll translate that for you, ladies and gentlemen. If you find that my Facebook account has disappeared, it means that Facebook have removed it because I'm a scammer. In fact, Facebook didn't remove his account. It's still there about six weeks later. How are you doing? He asked the next day. Fine, thanks, said Denise. How about you? I'm doing great, he said. I believe we have a lot to know about ourselves and we can be good friends. I want this friendship to blossom and see what the future holds for us. OK, if you say so, said Denise. Don't you think so, he asked. I have no idea, said Denise. I hardly know you. Really? he said. Yes, really, replied Denise. You know what? We need to make a time when we can actually be talking to each other, he said. What time is it there? It's quarter to five in the evening, said Denise. OK, he said. It's 0651 here, military time. I don't know what that means, said Denise. What's military time? Hello, Ellie said. 0651 p.m. here. I thought you were in Syria, said Denise. I am. Ah, said Denise. That isn't 0651, is it? It's 0651 would be nearly 7am in the morning. Nope, he said. Oh, OK, said Denise. That must be why they call it military time. Yes, it is, he said. It's evening here. You're two hours ahead of us, said Denise. Yep. I'm usually free when it's evening for me. I think we're both lucky to know each other here, he said. And if anyone can tell me if there really is such a thing as military time, please let me know in the comments below. And surely you wouldn't say 0651pm, even if there was such a thing as military time, would you? A few hours later, they got onto that old scammer speciality. I would like to have a picture of you if you do not mind me asking. Didn't my grandson put my photo on Facebook? asked Denise. I have no idea, he said. You could look, said Denise. I would love to have one here, he said. If you give me your address, I'll post one to you, said Denise. You mean my email address, he asked. No, darling, said Denise. Your address, where you live or work. I have one of them digital cameras. My grandson Benji prints my photos for me. I can put one in an envelope and post it to you. Great, he said. I'm in the world zone and I don't think that will get here safely. The world zone, said Denise, deliberately taking him up on what he'd said. I think a lot of the world has post. I mean war zone, he said. Oh, sorry, said Denise. I should have realised that. It's OK, he said. To be frank and sincere, which always means to be anything but, with you, the situation down here is beyond human imagination. Recently, there is a suicide bomb last explosion that occurs nine kilometres from the military camp. Every day what we encounter and experience is misery. Like the saying, there is never a good war or bad peace. It must be awful, said Denise. Yeah, he said, I regard myself as a soldier, though a soldier of peace. What do peacekeepers actually do? asked Denise. Peacekeeping helps host countries to become more resilient to conflict, he said, laying the groundwork to sustain long-term peace, including by addressing root causes of conflict. Obviously, he'd copied and pasted that, but I haven't gone looking for it. Yes, said Denise, but what do you do? How do you address the root causes of conflict? We're here to protect civilians, prevent conflict and violence, he said. OK, said Denise. Sounds very specialised. And if any of my viewers or their partners or family have ever actually been involved with the peacekeeping force, perhaps you could tell me in the comments below what you actually do. I've never actually worked out what peacekeeping forces really do. What are you doing now? he asked in true scammer style. Chopping up the fossilised mammoth in my cellar, said Denise. 
What are you doing? Nothing much. Just text you, he said. Have some rest later. Were you working today? asked Denise. Yes, he said. What about the pictures? What do you mean? asked Denise. I mean, I'd like to have a picture of you. I told you, said Denise. If you give me your address, I'll post one to you. The UK Army has a postal service. I'm sure yours must have one too. Oh, really? he said. All together, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, really, replied Denise. I think ours is BFPO, said Denise. I don't know if that still exists, but certainly that's what it used to be called. Don't you know what the US one is? No, I don't know, he said. How long have you been in the army? asked Denise. I've been in military 35 years now, said our scammer, walking straight into the trap. And you don't know what the military postal service is called. How very peculiar, said Denise. Unless you're about to find out. There seems to be quite a lot that our man doesn't know. Why can't you send it to me by Google Chat, he asked. I told you, said Denise. I have one of the digital cameras. My grandson Benji prints my photos. You know about printing? Do I know something you don't know? What could that be? he asked. You don't know about printing? asked Denise. Because I'm not using it, he said. You don't know about printing? Do you still write all your documents by hand for 35 years? You really are way behind the times, aren't you? LOL, he said. I don't see how that's funny, said Denise. You're funny, he said. I don't see how being so far behind the times that you don't even know about printing a document is funny. Of course I don't know about printing, said our 18-year-old street kid. I mean, said our experienced military officer with 35 years service. That does not mean I cannot know it now. What do you mean, of course, I don't know about printing, said Denise. I thought everyone knew about printing. What do you do if you want to hand out reports at a meeting or put your work schedule on your office wall? Type them out by hand on an old typewriter? Reports are certainly more formal than most ways of documenting meetings, he said, but they're not hard to create. And yes, I did Google that one for you. And here it is on a website called fellow.app. Most of the time, I put them down into paperworks. You didn't answer my question, said Denise. What do you do if you want to hand out a report at a meeting? Most people would print it out and hand it round. What do you do? And how do you get them onto paper if you don't print them? Do you write them by hand? Wouldn't that take hours? Light finally dawned in our 18-year-old's brain. I have a secretary that do the printing, he said. Excuse me, madam. Is this discussion all about printing machine? Oh, so you do know about printing, said Denise. No, this discussion is about you being a thicko who doesn't even know what printing means. Ha ha, he said. I can't decide if you're lying to me because you think I'm an old lady who knows nothing about modern technology or if you're really just the camp cleaner who's never used a printer. Oh my God, said our man. There was a bit more discussion about printing. And then Denise went to bed. Wednesday the 2nd of February. Hi there, friend. Good morning from Syria. I hope you have a very good night rest. I want to say good morning and may the blessing of today come to you and bless you and may you find favour in the hands of men and God. Good morning, said Denise. I'm going into town this morning to meet a friend for coffee. And so Denise disappeared for the day. Thursday the 3rd of February. Good morning from here, he said. Good morning to a wonderful soul. Wish you spread love, happiness and hope all round. May your day be filled with laughter. Morning. I had a wonderful night rest and I'm getting ready to start my day going. As usual, I'm having my morning coffee as I'm writing you through my computer. I'm glad you and I can talk on here. I know you're a smart woman. So great to have you on here. It's a wonderful day for me. And also, it will be a busy day as well. I don't know if you're still sleeping by now or you're awake. This was 20 past four in the morning UK time. I want this friendship to blossom and leads to greater thing ahead. I want people to be envious of this friendship. We never can tell what the future holds for us. But with time, we will know. We will get to know the things we like and the things we don't like. 
We have so much to learn about each other. Thanks again for your time and contact. I value friendship so much. Friends are the flashlight of our lives. Good morning, said Denise when she finally got up. It was the middle of the night here when you sent that message. I'm just having breakfast now. Oh no, Denise, please tell me you didn't mention food. Fortunately, her man wasn't online. I'm here, he said a few hours later. It's been a very long day for me and my men. So sorry I couldn't talk to you earlier on due to emergencies. I hope you're doing good. I'm doing good and I'm glad to have you as my friend. I'm sending you a million smiles. Take one of them for today and keep doing this each day because I wish to see you smiling every day. Hello? Hi, said Denise. Did you have a difficult day? I'm curious about your photo on Facebook. Why is your dog in a baby's pram? This was part of his profile photo on Facebook. Denise continued, Dogs have legs. Why is it in a baby's pram? To which our man replied, He has leg. I just feel like putting him in there to make him feel so special. And he sent him photographs of a man staring at a little dog who clearly was managing perfectly well to stand on his own four legs. There was some small talk. And then he said, in true scammer style, How has your present marital life affected you so far? Think about that question that the scammers sometimes ask. Or as Denise put it, What on earth does that mean? How has your present marital life affected you so far? Well, he said, Being lonely has really affected me a lot because as humans we all need someone to lean on in hard times and someone to talk to and share those cheerful moments with. And my son's also has not been happy because they also need someone to love and call a mother. I need a woman who would accept me and my sons and make us happy. And I will be so happy if she gives me the chance to do the same for her, as I will love her and lay a good foundation for her kid, if any. That isn't even remotely an answer to the question you asked, is it? said Denise. If you can't even understand and answer your own question, why on earth did you ask? Oh, said our man. Okay, can you help for the proper answer to the question? Possibly hoping that Denise might enlighten him for future potential scams. What is your present marital life? asked Denise. I already told you, he said. Tell me again, she said. What is your present marital life? Being married or not married, used on official forms to ask if a person is married, single, divorced or widowed, he said. What our man probably meant was marital status, but even then the question didn't make much sense. What is your present marital life? asked Denise. You know, your own present marital life. Yes, replied our man, very unhelpfully. Okay, said Denise, last time. What is your present marital life? Adding underneath, I've spaced the words out so you can read them one at a time. I am single, he said. Phew, said Denise. So you don't have a present marital life. So think about that stupid question you asked. And why are you telling me that you will lay a good foundation for my kid, if any? What is that supposed to mean? I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about the woman of my dream, he said. Okay, fair enough, said Denise. Keep looking for her. Then, if you happens to be the person, he said, we can plan the future together. Then Denise thought she'd ask her man for some advice on buying a cooker. I tried this in a previous video. I can't even remember which one it was. Can I ask you for some advice? She asked. Go ahead, he said. I'm thinking of buying a new cooker, but I can't decide whether to get an electric one or a gas one, or maybe an electric oven with a gas hob. Just wondered if you have any suggestions. What do you use? I advise you go for an electric oven with a gas hob, he said. In case you run out of gas while cooking, you can use your electric. Why would I run out of gas? asked Denise. I don't think there's a gas shortage, is there? I really do not have any idea if there is any here, he said. And she was very unkindly asking that because, although of course our man claims to be American, the person that she's talking to doesn't understand piped gas to the house because they live in an area where you use bottled gas. And I'll just add, I live in an area where we use bottled gas. I don't actually have gas at all. Why wouldn't there, 
said Denise. We've had gas here all my life. You have gas in Colorado Springs? Yes, I have, he said. So why would you think I'd run out of gas? said Denise. We get gas the same way you do. It's a large city, isn't it? Yeah, he said. You know, things happen when you least expect it. I've never heard of a large city running out of gas, said Denise. Where does the gas in Colorado Springs come from? I wasn't talking about a whole city running out of gas, he said. You're cooking gas. That's what I meant. I think I'd better also add that what you call gas in the United States, we call petrol over here, what you put in cars and trucks. And what we call gas, I think you call natural gas. Why would you run out of gas if the rest of the city hasn't, said Denise. That doesn't even make sense. You do know how your gas is supplied in Colorado Springs, because you didn't answer me when I asked where the gas in Colorado Springs comes from. From the refinery, of course, he said. So why would anyone run out, asked Denise. Why would I run out? How do people run out of gas in their cars, he said. Oh, FGS, said Denise. You don't seriously think gas cookers run on petrol or diesel, do you? No, he said. Oh, phew, said Denise. So, he continued, what's your budget? Probably around 350 to 400 pounds, said Denise. Not bad, he replied. What's your religion? Blimey, as my old gran used to say, said Denise. How does that affect the kind of cooker I'll buy? That's a new one on me. Ha ha, he said. Why are you so mean to me? Mean, said Denise. I still don't know why it affects the kind of cooker I should buy. Is this something I should know about? I'll have to ask the pastor next time I go to the temple. I'm a ninth day de Adventist. Ha ha, he said. You're funny. Enough of the gas talking. Tell me what you did at work today, asked Denise. You said it had been a very long day. I start my day by desert patrolling, he said. Every day. Work. And only a few hours to rest. But I hope we'll have more time on myself when I come home. Sorry, my dear. I have to go. Emergency just came up. Text when I'm back. Stay safe. Day four of the scam. Friday, February the 4th. Hey, he said. I know you must be sleeping by now. Have a good night's sleep. And then, when morning came... Having a friend like you is one of the greatest privileges in life. So, if you ever question your worth, know that there are many like me whose smiles are caused by you. Your existence is special, and I hope that this day reminds you of that. Good morning, dear friend. Good morning, said Denise. I'll be going into town on the half-past ten bus. I always do that on Friday morning. Hope you managed to sort out last night's emergency. Yeah, he said. I hope you have a very good night rest. I want to say good morning and may the blessing of today come to you and bless you and may you find favour in the hands of men and of God. Hey, are you there? Yes, I'm here, said Denise, but I'll be going into town soon. I usually do on Friday mornings. It's raining right now. I'm hoping it will stop before I get the bus. I hope so too, he said. Wow, I'm glad you're experiencing rain. It hardly rain here. I'll blow hard, said Denise. Maybe I can send it to you. OK, please do, he said. How far with your gas, cook? Wishing you a good and blessed day ahead. I never knew you, and now I want to. My days are filled with you, he said a few hours later. I want to be close to you always. I'm addicted to the way I feel when I think of you. Yes, the smell of all that money keeps him online. Hello, said Denise. Yes, I've decided which cocker I want. I went into Robert Dyer's while I was in town. I'm going to get an electric one. There was a lot of small talk, which I'm not going to read out to you. And then we got to. I would prefer not to steal your time. All I want is a portion of your time, with the goal that I can hold you and whisper to your years. I can't promise to fix every one of your issues, yet I can promise you won't need to face them alone. Ah, oh, said Denise. What issues do you think I have? Are you confusing me with someone else? No, not at all, he said. Life always comes with issues and challenges, you know that. On the off chance that life is like a candle in the wind, I would have really loved to keep the conversation going. But I'm feeling sleepy here. Good night from here. And so he went to bed. Saturday the 5th of February, day 5 of the scam. Good morning from Syria. 
I'm getting ready to start my day going, as usually. I'm having my morning coffee. You can come and join me. You shall have very awesome experiences today. You shall indeed be blessed. Remember, you're so special to me. Good morning, friend. As friendly as you are, and of a beautiful person you are, may life be friendly and beautiful to you as you go out today. You say such lovely things, said Denise. I'm just packing to go to my daughter. Have a nice time. I never intended to be the most important person in your life. That's just too much to ask. But I do hope that I'd crossed your mind and you'd smile, thinking that I touched your life in a special way. Have a wonderful day. Yes, you touched her life, so she spent the day avoiding you. Sunday the 6th of February, day 6 of the scam. He sent her some flowers. She ignored him. Monday the 7th of February. She ignored him. Tuesday the 8th of February. Hey, he said, I wish you a colourful and beautiful life. So this is day eight of the scam with a few missing days. Maybe you get all the things you've ever wishes for. Have a nice day ahead. Hi, said Denise. I just got home a couple of hours ago. Welcome home. I was actually doing some paperwork on my computer when your message popped up on my screen. It's been a sunny day here in Syria. How's the family? Hope everyone's doing good. And they made a bit more small talk for the rest of the day until he got on to. How are you feeling? I'm feeling fine, said Denise. Why wouldn't I? Of course, he said. I just wanted to make sure you have a great time. What are you doing now? Hanging upside down in the airing cupboard. What are you doing? said Denise. Nothing much, he said. Just want to send some time with you. Tell me, do you wish to get married again soon? And what kind of man do you look for? No, said Denise. I have no desire to get married again. My Albie was a lovely man. Really? said the man. I like to meet a woman with so much care and understanding, love and respect, and also will love my son too. And I look for a woman who is very open-minded that I will get married to and spend the rest of my life with. Yes, really, said Denise. Perhaps you should join one of those dating group things. Well, I don't think so, he said. I would like to learn more about you, as you seems very interesting and easy to talk to. Who will have more time to talk? Have you been working while I was with my daughter? asked Denise. Yes, I have, he said. How long have you been single? Aren't you going to tell me what you were doing? asked Denise. Yes, I have. Isn't exactly a riveting conversation, is it? And my husband died five years ago, said Denise. Oh, sorry about that. Are you going to tell me what you've been doing at work while I was with my daughter? You said you wanted to have more time to talk. Yes, I did, he said. Are you ever going to tell me what you did at work while I was away? Asked Denise again, to which our man replied, I do my best to find good and have fun, as tomorrow is promised to no one. I also try to have an optimistic outlook. I will admit that I am loving this stage of my life. I feel a better appreciation of the little things and enjoy living life. A lot of things happening here that you do not expect me to discuss. Most, every day, people die here. You understand? Sounds like you've been sent to Syria to kill people, said Denise. Oh no, he said. I'm here to protect life and property. And if anyone's standing between that, then he's risking his or her life. That doesn't make sense, said Denise. Try typing it again. I'm here for peacekeeping, he said. What does that actually mean? asked Denise. How do you do that? I've always wondered. The truth is that some have to die for others to live, he said. That doesn't tell me what peacekeeping actually involves, said Denise. Yes, it does, he said. No, it doesn't, said Denise. So you kill people so others can live. Doesn't sound very peaceful. I do not just kill people, he said. What else do you do, asked Denise. I have no idea what peacekeeping means. Killing people doesn't sound very peaceful to me. Some humans want to make this world unbearable for other humans, he said. That still doesn't tell me what peacekeeping actually means, said Denise. I'm beginning to think you don't know either, and you're just trying to impress me with silly stories. Because so far, all you've managed to tell me is that being sent to Syria for peacekeeping equals killing people. A man, tried again, protect civilians, actively prevent conflict, Reduce violence, strengthen security. OK, said Denise. Who's fighting who? I don't know anything about Syria. The country.
country is still mired in poverty and violence, he said, copying and pasting. What started with a brutal crackdown on anti-government protests later turned into a complex battlefield involving international armies, local militias and foreign fighters. After a forceful crackdown on peaceful student protests against the government of Bashar al-Assad, conflict continues with insecurity in parts of the country. The consequences are tragic for civilians, particularly children. That's all I can say. We were once attacked by the ISIS and I got stuck here in the tent. I lost some of my men. You see, I'm not supposed to be saying things like that. Correction, said Denise. That's all DNZ can say. I'd prefer you to tell me for yourself. Obviously, Denise had Googled it. I'm the one tell you myself, he said. That's an obvious lie, said Denise, because even I can find the original. So clearly you aren't a soldier. What are you really? The camp cleaner? Oh my God, said our offended camp cleaner. The secretary stuck at home in the US, pretending you were posted because it sounds more impressive. Oh, please. Which is it? said Denise. It's obvious you're lying. So what's the truth? Which truth? he said. I'm here in Syria and I've been telling you what is going on here, which I am not supposed to. Oh, don't you know what truth means? said Denise. It means telling me what really happened or who really wrote what you typed. But clearly you didn't write it. You know that. I know that. So clearly you lied to me. No, I haven't, he said. Allow me to refresh your sadly lacking memory said Denise, copying and pasting the bit where she'd said, that's all DNZ can say. I'd prefer you to tell me for yourself. Oh my goodness, said our offended scammer. I take it that means, oh my goodness, yes, I'll tell a lie, didn't I? said Denise. I do not think so, he said. To be frank and sincere with you, the situation down here is beyond human imagination. So what would you call telling me something that isn't true? asked Denise. I call it a lie, to refresh your memory again. She copied and pasted the same bit again. Wait, he said, you mean to tell me what said never happened? Okay, let's do this one step at a time, shall we, said Denise, because I can see your brain is struggling. You told me the country is still mired in poverty and violence, etc. Clearly, you copied and pasted that from here. And she sent him a link to a news article on Facebook. When I said, correction, that's all DNZ can say, I'd prefer you to tell me for yourself, you told me, I'm the one tell you myself. Even you know you didn't write that yourself, so you lied when you told me you did. Okay, he said. Is that simple enough steps for your adult brain? asked Denise. No, it isn't, he said. Okay, said Denise. Would you like me to type it one word at a time, so even you can understand it? I don't like men who lie because they think it sounds impressive. I understand that, he said. It's quite the opposite, said Denise. You aren't even a little bit impressive. I know that, he said. Good, said Denise. So, shall we start again? Tell me, in your own words, what peacekeepers do. I'm just going to talk to my son. You have about half an hour to write something for yourself. I regard myself as a soldier, though a soldier of peace, he said. So what I try to do as a person who maintains or restores amity and peace. Hey? Yes, said Denise. Are you going to finish that last sentence? You have absolutely no idea what a peacekeeper does, do you? You can't even finish a sentence. We could just copy and paste the phrase so it makes sense. And she gave him a link to where he'd copied it from. It can go away. Goodbye. And you had two hours to write something for yourself. Idiot. Please, madam, he said. What is peacekeeping? I would like to know. Since you're supposed to be the soldier who's doing it, I'd expect you to know, said Denise. So tell me what you really are. My guess is you drive a truck in the army base and you're just pretending to be in Syria. Oh, really? He said, sending two laughing faces. OK, if that's wrong, said Denise, what do you really do? I'm a commanding general in the US Army Force, he said. But not peacekeeping in Syria. So where are you really? And don't try another lie to impress me. It won't work. I assume you're in a base. Somewhere in the US. No, I'm not, he said. And you've made it to command in general without knowing what peacekeeping is. Try again. Only this time. 
Try telling me the truth, because I hate lying idiots like you. Oh my God, he said. You have a count of ten to tell me the truth, or you can go away. She got down to zero and said goodbye. I'm currently in Syria for the peacekeeping mission assignment in regards to the war. That's the truth. Okay. Goodbye, said Denise. If you're going to keep telling such obvious lies, I'm not interested in talking to you. How do you mean, he asked. Why are you so mean to me? Oh, poor scammer. Wednesday, February the 9th, day nine of the scam. Good morning, my dear friend, he said. Hope you're doing great. Peacekeeping here, he said, having asked his mate to write something for him, has a lot to do with helping the different tribes in the country find peace with each other. Because I'm the absence of peace, they're easily attacked and killed by ISIS terrorists. And that's why I always invite the major ethnic groups and interact with top community heads, like Arabic speaking or Turkmen, Alawis. And so he rambled on. If you want to read it all, just pause the video and read it for yourself. I'm going through a lot most times, and it's not easy to be here and to try talking to you and you, but I try every day. And the least I expect is your undiluted love and total support and not giving me as much worry as my work here does. Except you don't want me to survive here. So you're still determined to lie to me, said Denise. I told you before, and I'll not tell you again, unless you apologise for lying to me about copying and pasting. I do not want anything to do with you. I hope that's clear enough, even for your minuscule brain to comprehend. His brain apparently failed to comprehend. He tried contacting her on Sunday. He tried contacting her on Monday. He tried contacting her on Tuesday. And then... He gave up. Goodbye, Mr. Martin. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Please share it. Please comment down below. Please subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you again in another video.